This climb is called Tolerance, a virtually unprotected E8 on a summit crag in the Mourne Mountains of Northern Ireland. It's been Kev's lifetime climbing goal for almost as long as we've been climbing together. It's been 17 years since I first belayed Kev on this route and I've been worried about a return visit ever since. That's it, that's, that's the proof. Well, we... At some point we'd have to go back to the Mourns. <laughs> Much as I didn't want to see Kev hurt himself on Tolerance, I also worried that if I returned to the Mourns with him, it would be almost impossible for me not to get involved with the climb myself. But regardless of who put themselves above those leg breaker slabs on Tolerance, at least we'd try and have a good time doing it. Yeah. I see so you go up this like ramp thing here. Yeah. And then cut into that there and that's the big the big hod there. My camera's really struggling not to be overexposed by your chest cave. <laughs> <laughs> I did warn you. <laughs> <laughs> What route are we standing below, Kev? So we're standing below Tolerance right now, which is like my dream route stroke nemesis. Why did you say that? Just I've been here so many times to try it. You know, I never quite go there while I let through. Either not been good enough or the weather's just been like utter gash almost every time I've been here. Like this time it's like 20 odd degrees and it's so warm. Last time I was melting ice off of the hods. I cannot wait to get on it and try it again. I think because I've been, like, ever since I climbed my first E7, I've always like, thought, oh well, like, yeah, it's the next obvious thing. But trying to find one that suited my hand has been nigh on impossible. I've just not found anything that suited yet, and this is the only one that's came close. So I think that's why it's special. And it's here, just this place is too magic. I've been worried about this trip for a long time. <laughs> I first visited these mountains in 2006 and I came to repeat the famous route Divided Years which was the first route in the world to get graded E10. I actually downgraded that route to E8 but it's still an absolutely amazing line on lovely granite and I really enjoyed the trip. When I came over I was with Kev Shields and he tried Tolerance and he actually got on pretty well with it and it started off a spark in his mind as a proper leg smasher if you fall off, just not a route to fall off at all. So we've been over for a couple of days, it started off actually too hot and then last night it was quite good conditions and uh, we were able to get on it properly. Kev did really well, he's, he's done it in three sections and uh, so he's properly done all the moves now which is really impressive. I was also thinking about getting on the route myself, but I really wasn't sure. You don't need to do it. Of course I don't need to do it. I don't need to do any route. But I do like hard climbing and I do still like the feeling of uh, being out there above gear on limit climbs. Definitely going to have to do a lot of physical training. I just need to be much stronger. Fingers and I think Maybe full strength a wee bit more. Then we fucking do that straight. Yeah.
At first, the granite was too hot in the sun to justify leading tolerance, and I destroyed my skin trying to pretend otherwise. But after a full day of growing skin and drinking tea, there was a cool wind, a smooth top rope, and a decision to be made for me. I've done many E8s like this before. In good conditions, they can feel pretty steady and tempting to lead. For those happy to risk their legs, this would make a great first E8. You don't have to be very strong. You don't even have to remain composed for all that long. You just have to convince yourself that you won't fall for a couple of minutes. But no one is immune to things going wrong. This route is rather better suited to someone younger who hasn't yet experienced the limitation of permanently trashed ankles. I am four surgeries in now and a year and a half of my life on crutches. I have no desire to slip off a scrittily smear and do it all again. And I know that that's the deal if you were to fall off tolerance. So for me, the equation comes down to margin. I need to feel that I have so many grades in hand that only a massive cock up on lead would see me fall off. While I arranged the gear, I wrestled with the problem that the cruxes are not really on positive holds. I could certainly pull harder, but there isn't the hold to pull on. I argued it back and forth, but rationality was just taking me round in circles. In the end, a heuristic took over, a simple feeling, I just wanted to go up. As I started to move, it seemed to make sense, and then quite quickly the door closed behind me. Come on, crank it up. I would say that it wasn't really until the next day that I was glad that I did decide to go up. Sorry to put you through a harrowing, <laughs> harrowing <laughs> belay and you Kev. I thought the first time and it's probably not going to be the last bit. <laughs> so. I like, you always know it's going to go to a certain extent but it still doesn't take away the, there's always that wee, like what if, Yeah. you know, or, mm, it could, it I could. Know. I was like, right, it's about seven, eight o'clock. It's gonna get, you know, if, if I'm sitting there with broken legs, it's gonna nah, get pretty fucking cold quite quickly. Like I was trying, all that stuff was going through my head, like, right, where do we go to get reception? What do we do? <laughs> like, it's gonna be safe for Dave, even lower than the mafia there, because he's gonna hit that, he's gonna be stuck there. We need to get him for there, down to here before we do anything. Aye, there was a ton of stuff going through my mind at yeah. that one. Yeah. Best to just not fall off. <laughs> A couple of moves weren't coming together just yet and conditions were also seeming to be a problem. But that all changed on the final session where he looked really close to linking the whole thing on a top rope.
That's a good link, but a scary one. Approaching the point where the real fork in the road arrives. Once you see the possibility is there, do you lean in and decide to begin the real work of preparation to lead? Or do you decide that it's not the right challenge for you? Making a positive decision either way is admirable to me. I think the only wrong decision is to remain indefinitely at the fork. This is a dangerous route and any climber who recognises an unjustifiable risk when they see one is a climber I look up to. But choosing the other path is not easy either. Knowing you are capable of something and actually making it happen are two different things. Worse still, there is always the temptation to take a shortcut to trying to lead before you really have the margin required to do it safely. To climb a limit project like this, the battle is not really won by mustering a big effort on lead day, it's won on the day to day. Your lifestyle choices on every mundane day starting with right now. Are you going to train that weakness today? Are you going to go to bed early tonight? Or will you put it off till tomorrow again? Are you going to stick to that healthy diet or are you just kidding? All these are tough decisions at one point. If you keep making them over and over, it gets tiring. Turn them into habits and it all gets a lot easier. This is the bit that most people never really crack and why the illusion that great climbing achievements can't be done by everyone persists.